Welcome to People Like You. Today's guest has spent the past 25 years in leadership at Fortune 500 companies, and she's highly respected among her peers. On today's program, Mary Martin Stutz talks about the power we have through prayer and the first ever Skillful Women Call to Prayer event that will take place this fall, so don't go away. This is a phenomenal opportune time for women to cause an impact in the earth like never before seen. Prayer is our greatest weapon. It is our greatest tool. And God is faithful to us mm -hmm. when we pray and when we seek Him and not just try to figure out everything on our on own. On our own. Yes. Welcome back. Mary Martin Stutz has served in leadership at Kaiser Permanente, Genentech, United Health Group, Bristol Myers Squibb, and is currently working for a leading media and technology company. A graduate of the University of Southern California and the executive program in organization and strategy at Stanford, Mary is highly regarded by her peers. The Network Journal named her to the publication's 2012 list of 25 influential black women in business and in 2010, Black Health Magazine named her one of the most influential African Americans in healthcare. Through each accomplishment, she has relied on her faith. Mary is with us today to talk about a new organization she founded called the Skillful Women Call to Prayer. And we're so glad you're with us here today. I am pleased to be here with you as well. Yes. This is going to be a great conversation, and I'm excited about what God is doing. Well, you have been very successful, Mary. You know, God has blessed me. I always tell everybody when I first received Jesus Christ as my Savior, the Lord called me to be a prayer warrior and everything else is incidental. And God has op incidentally right, opened right, some right. phenomenal doors for me. And I would like to acknowledge at this point that I was trying to think back, we have known each other for maybe 25 years. Mm, has yes, it been that long? At least, if and, not longer. And okay, well, we'll admit to 25 <laughs> right. and then we'll move on. <laughs> right. Uh, but. I have always known you mm -hmm. to be a woman of prayer. Yes. I just can remember times in both of our lives when we weren't certain what the future was, yes. but you always held on to your faith mm -hmm. and always prayed mm -hmm. through. Absolutely, because God is so faithful and this is the power that we have been entrusted with as believers in the earth today. Obviously, we all have our individual prayer lives, but we need to understand that there are levels of, of power that comes with prayer. And there's power that we have as individuals, but then there is power. The Bible says that uh, one will chase a thousand, two, uh, ten thousand, but a threefold cord is not easily broken. So even just to have three of us coming together adds more power. But when you can organize and coordinate a church to have corporate prayer and bring the full body of Christ together, phenomenal things can happen because of that power that comes together. Because prayer changes things. You know, when you think about prayer, prayer is two-way communication. So imagine if you go away on, uh, you know, for a business trip and uh, you call home and you're talking to your spouse or your kids and mm -hmm. you say, hi, honey, I'm having a good time. I'll be home Thursday. Bye. Bye. Well, you haven't had a conversation because you did all the talking. And unfortunately, <laughs> that's how many of us pray. But prayer is communion with God. It's fellowship with God. It's talking to Him about what's on our heart, but then it's also listening listening to him to get the instruction. And that is how Skillful Women Called to Prayer was birthed. As I was praying and seeking God about the many things that we're seeing happening right now, and specifically as many mothers do, yes. um, <laughs> calling out to God about my children. Mm. Because you see, there is an unprecedented attack against the youth right now. Let's talk about that. Yes. <laughs> so if you look at look at what's happening and it's a multicultural attack. Yeah, yeah. So if you look at what's happening with the African American and the Hispanic males with the violence mm -hmm. and the crime and the imprisonment. But don't stop there. There was a recent article report that the fastest growing street gangs in America are Asian American youth. 
on the East Coast, mm -hmm. there is an unparalleled, like never before seen epidemic of heroin use. I mean, shooting up with a needle, heroin use amongst white males in their 20s. Mm -hmm. And here on the West Coast, that epidemic is uh, crystal methamphetamines. So there is an all-out attack against our youth and specifically our males. And, and you have to wonder why. And it's because it's like the enemy wants to go after our future. Mm -hmm. There's a whole mm -hmm. generation under attack. And even though you're seeing it with the males, don't think that it's not happening with the young women too. And so there, and there's depression, yes, and yes. there's a suicide oppression. spirit and oppression. Well, even within some of the Christian communities, uh, you know, specifically we can talk about like college campuses. You know, it's kind of some area that I've been close to here more recently. And even with some of the Christian organizations mm -hmm. on campuses, you've got discouraged young people. You've got people mm -hmm. doing young people um, with belief systems that are kind of participating in things they they wouldn't have mm -hmm. participated in before. And you mm -hmm. just see it's just this this acceptance, mm -hmm. this acceptance of things in their lives that maybe they wouldn't have before. It, and so that's the other thing. You see this increasing suicide rate on the college yes. campuses. And these are young people who, you know, have their whole lives and their futures ahead of them. Of them and and it depressed. doesn't matter what school. It can be some of the top mm -hmm. Ivy League schools. So if you look at what's going on, it is an unprecedented attack. And as I was um, before the Lord praying, uh, actually I have, I do a noontime uh, prayer call with yeah. uh, the members of my prayer team at Revival Center. We do. And we, as we were praying, the Lord began to give me this word prophetically that things are not as bad as they seem. God said, I am shifting some things in the spirit. I am moving some things. I am turning around. I'm doing the things that you are asking me to. There's a shift. But then he instructed me to go to Jeremiah chapter 7 where it talks about call for the wailing women, the skillful women, the cunning women. God said, I want you to call for the women who are mourning their children, who are crying out to me on behalf of their children and not just their children, there are other things, mm -hmm. their relationships. It could be career things, it could be financial things, but these are women who are crying out to me. God says, I want you to call for them and I want them to come together and to pray and intercede so that the manifestation of this shift that I am doing right. in the spirit is manifested in the earth and you all benefit. I want to hear more about the shift, more with Mary Martin Stutz when we return. Welcome back. Mary, God spoke to you about a shift. Yes, and this was earlier, um, and it's so interesting that the Lord spoke to me about this shift, about this turnaround, um, because God is so faithful. And, and then I started hearing ministers all over start to talk about the shift and what God wants to do, because it's one spirit, and He is giving us this instruction. And so the Lord said to call these women together, and, and I went to the book of Jeremiah, and the book of Jeremiah talks about in chapter 9 how um, this, this attack coming against the people mm -hmm. of God and how it, the, it says that death is creeping into the windows and mm -hmm. taking our children. And so there's mourning, there's sorrow, there's wailing. And the Lord was saying that there are a lot of women who are sorrowful and mourning and well, not necessarily that their children are deceased, but they are under attack. Under attack. And mm -hmm. there, many of them are crying out to God on their own and right. they're fasting yes. and they're praying, as I was yes. doing. Yes. And God said, but call them all together. And I'm believing the Lord for 500 women to show up at this uh, at this event when we have when we have and the it's school for women call in, to It's going to be in the fall. In the fall. And so it's always going to be in the fall. And we're going to information on your website. Yes. And I want to be one of those 500 women. Absolutely. I'm planning to be there. Absolutely. Um, you know, but, I'd like to just take a moment and yeah. say that, you know, I had been, I was praying, Lord, there is, we have a, a place for a show content. Mm -hmm. And Lord, what do you want? And I'd just gotten off the phone with one of our staff members and we were, you know, I really want to hold this space. I want to see what, you know, God wants us to do. And within seconds, I heard from you. Wow. And the Lord put me on your heart through yes, a very unusual circumstance too <laughs> in that same minute. In the mm -hmm. minute that I heard about this, my, my spirit bore witness. Yeah. Um, I think I shared with you mm -hmm. that 
um, probably for almost two years now, every Friday morning, unless I um, cannot for a mm. business re reason or traveling, but every Friday morning I've been devoting for almost two years now um, to prayer and fasting for this place, mm -hmm. for the Bay Area, for yes. my family, for my husband, for, you know, because um, I can feel the attack. And, you know, my daughters, we pray a couple times a day often, at least once, but a couple times a day. But the kinds of things they're struggling with are things that I didn't struggle with. Some of the things that are out there that, that are creeping through the doors yes. are things. And they're, it, I think you said it. It's In many cases, we are trusting God, mm -hmm. but the result isn't there yet. Mm -hmm. Or our faith is being challenged through this walk that is a different kind of walk yes. than at least I have experienced. That's right. Things, our kids are facing things that we did not face when we were their ages. And that's one of the reasons why we need to come together and draw the strength mm -hmm. from one another. There truly is strength in numbers. Amen. I know there's Amen. a sports team that says that, but there truly is strength in numbers. And so we need to come together. And uh, you know, the interesting thing as I was studying this, um, first of all, when, when God put that 500 number on my heart and the auditorium holds 500, I said, God, where in the world am I gonna get 500? <laughs> Listen to what he said. He says, you just put out the call. Wow. They know who they are. Mm -hmm. And every person that I have told about this across the country, I have women coming from Florida, Texas, LA, St. Louis, Chicago, every single one that I've mentioned it to, they're like, I have to be there. Yeah. I am coming. Yeah. Because it, they, they're getting a Healing witness yeah. in their spirit yeah. that yeah. this is what we need to do. And now the reason it's important, there, there are three things that, that God is saying. First of all, he wants us to rejoice in our sorrow. Mm. So if you read in uh, Jeremiah chapter 9, and it talks about the wailing in the morning, uh, if you read to the end of that chapter, God begins to talk about how he wants to turn that situation around mm -hmm. for his people, for Amen. the wailing Amen. women, yes. to cause them to be able to rejoice in their sorrow. And then uh, if you keep reading, when it gets over to about the 30th chapter through chapter 33, he starts talking about how he's going to draw them back and call them back and, and give them joy for mourning and how they're going to come and pour out prayers for their future. These are the three things. One is to rejoice in your sorrow. So we're going to come together. We're going to embrace one another. We're going to cry out to God. And then we're going to pour out prayers for our future because it's not over. Amen. Listen, Amen. the word God said, get, said to me is, look, I am not going to leave you in this state. Amen. God is not going to leave his people in the state we're in, depressed, confused, not understanding, unfulfilled, sick and feeble in our bodies, stressed out, questioning. God says, I'm not going to leave you in this state yes. that these adverse circumstances have brought in your life. That's not the kind of God Amen. I am for my people. I'm going to help you. I'm going to bring you through this thing. Yes, I am. So I want you to come back and, and pour out prayers for your future. And over in uh, chapter 33 of, of Jeremiah in verse 13, he says that I am going to, in the Message Bible, he says, I am coming, I'm going to invade your grief wow. with joy. That's it. This is why God wants to bring us together so we can rejoice in the sorrow. He, we can pour out prayers for our future and we can let God invade our grief with his joy. Amen. Amen. That's Amen. what he wants to do. That's why we pray. That's what, but you see, God can't do anything. He's given us the power. If we, the people, his people in the earth, don't speak it out of our mouths. Then he can. All right. You have talked about skillful women. Yes. Who does that represent? What if I don't consider myself a skillful woman? <laughs> there is a cohort of women who have set themselves apart. They have let go of the distractions, the day-to-day -day distractions, and given themselves over to God. And like I said, they may not have told anybody about it. They may not have joined a prayer team. Some of them have, but they may not have. But these are women who understand there is something yeah. more. Yeah. There is a pulling, a drawing that they are experiencing right now, and they understand this is a phenomenal 
opportune time for women to cause an impact in the earth like never before seen. What I've been saying is we are in the middle of the greatest miracle of our lives. Mm. Right now in this difficult time that we may be going through, God's working a miracle for us right now. It's those women who need a miracle. All right, so then you can tell us how we can get involved when we yes. come back from the break. Okay, more when we return, don't go away now. We're back with Mary Martin Stutz, founder of Skillful Women Call to Prayer, and we are going to be at that event this fall. Yes. And we can get information on your site about yes. that, which will provide the info at the end of the program. But what can we expect at that event? I know we can expect praise yes. and worship <laughs> yes. and joy yes, and absolutely. prayer. And prayer and warfare. And we are going to pray, one, we're going to have a time of praying one for another. Mm -hmm. Of course, the word says, enter his gates with thanksgiving yes. and his courts with praise. So we're coming in with strong praise and worship. Wait. It's phenomenal. And then we're going to enter into that time of praying one for another. Yeah. And that also is a mighty move of God as we are taking that time in groups of twos and threes to pray one for another. But then we are going to come to the altar and we are going to make our bold declarations of how, see we, the Bible tells us not to be moved make by our senses known, yes. and the, what we see, hear or feel, we're not to be moved by our five senses, right. but we're to be moved only by the word of God. The word says, whose report will you believe? We shall believe the report of the Lord. So we're gonna come together and have that time of making those bold declarations and then warring in the spirit together Mm. As, as one body for each of those areas for our children. See, see, you know, God has told us, in, also in Jeremiah, he, tell, he tells the women, look, refrain your eyes from crying. He says, because I'm going to gather your children from the enemy's land and they will hear my voice and they will remember me yeah, yeah. and they will return from the enemy's land. What do you mean the enemy's land? Our kids are coming back from addiction, yes. from bondage, Amen. Amen. from crime, mm -hmm. from all of the things that they have been attacked from. They are being loosed and set free from that. So we need to war for our children. We need to war for our finances. Many homes yes. are under financial under attack. attack. Yes. And God has said, look, the word says money answers all things. Mm -hmm. And so we need to war and intercede for the provision of God yes. so that we can fulfill the call and the plans and the purposes of God. And then for our dreams, our, there's, there's more left in us. There's, there, God's not done with no. us. Our lives Amen. are not over. I always tell people when I was a kid growing up and I never left anything on my plate. I ate everything. <laughs> <laughs> and, I think and I've that's heard you what, say that before. <laughs> and that's how I feel about the things yeah, of God. Yeah, I want everything yes, God yes, has for me. Yes. I want more. I know that God wants to give us a new touch, Amen. a new anointing. Jesus said in the book of Revelation, you know, God carries this theme all the way through the Bible of, of restoring. He says, Jesus said, I have made all things new. new. Yes. God wants to make all Everything things new, new, to turn all this mm -hmm. turmoil around and make it new. He says, I am the Alpha and Omega. I'm the beginning and the end. Listen, and he's the middle. Yeah, the devil yeah, wasn't yeah. my alpha and the devil's not going to be my omega. Right. But we have to declare yes. that and stand on that word and begin to war in the spirit. Then we're going to break for lunch. The campus has invited us for those women who want to stay for lunch. They can go and have lunch in the dining hall there. Um, and then we're going to come back after lunch and we are going to hear three very powerful testimonies of women who are going to share how God impacted mm. uh, their lives through prayer and how they were able to impact the lives of others. And then we are going to enter into a phenomenal time of praise as our weapon. Because yeah. praise is a mm, weapon. Yes, we is. have so much war, uh, you know, weapons that God has given us and so much uh, that we can fight with. Yeah. But many times we neglect to use one of our most powerful weapons, which is praise, which is coming to God in faith. Uh, because the Bible says that Sarah believed and she received the promise because she had confidence mm -hmm. in the one who promised that he was 
faithful Amen. to do it. You know, I'm so thrilled about this event, and it was in an event uh, in the East Bay that we were in a praise and worship time now um, almost three years ago where um, I was actually healed of something I was dealing with. Mm -hmm. And so I'm a, uh, I know prayer changes yes. things. So I want people to come to this or women come to this mm -hmm. expecting. Another yes. thing, Mary, is this is free. It is There free. is no fee. No fee. You are, uh, the Lord gave this, this to you and right. um, people can come totally free of charge. That's They're not right. expected to do anything. That's this, right. And you've actually gone out and have set this up and made the arrangements. Yes. So it's totally purely mm -hmm. out of your heart for prayer mm -hmm. that I have seen That's in right. your life right. for over 25 years. That's and I want right. to thank you for doing this yes. and we want to be part of it and I will be there. You are welcome. All right. So thank and then you. we can we can get some more information on your site which is skillful women call to prayer dot org. Dot org. All right. Skillful women call yeah. C A L L to prayer dot org. Right. Yes. And then we it's can It's not a conference. No, I, that's but right. It's call. not a conference. That's it is right. a call. It's not a prayer conference. We're not going to come teach you yes. about prayer. We're coming to pray. <laughs> and in between times, if anyone would like to see you in person or have you pray with them, or I mean, we can find you at the church. Absolutely. At Revival Center Ministries, absolutely. And you can reach out to me via the website. There's an email address on there, and there's also a phone number. All right. Absolutely. And so anything else you want to add before we conclude? I want to say to the women who are watching, the skillful women, you know who you are. And I need you to take this time and realize I need to set myself apart because there is something waiting for me. There is something special that God has done for me. And all I need to do is come together with this collective power of women in a state of expectancy. I need to answer the call and I'm going to do that because I believe that this is an opportune time for me and I'm going to answer the call. You know, I was in the city yesterday in Chinatown and um, it would be interesting that you would share that today um, in the area of gang violence because I was in an area that I didn't expect to see markings all over the buildings mm -hmm. and it just mm -hmm. reminded me again of, um, you know, sin has entered this world mm -hmm. and in areas that you wouldn't even expect, right. there it is at the window. Mm -hmm. So appreciate what you're doing. Thank and, you. And uh, thanks for being with us today. To find out you're more welcome. about today's topic, go to skillfulwomencalledaprayer.org or ktln.tv. Remember that KTLN is a donor-supported ministry and programs like this one are made possible through your support. Join us again next week. <laughs>